Hi everyone, um, I am here tonight with Julie Osborne who is going to be talking to us about discovering her confidence. So for those that don't know me, I'm Emma Cowling and I am your host. Um, over this kind of half an hour, three quarters of an hour, I'm going to be going through some questions with Julie, exploring, having a conversation and just finding out more about her journey, particularly over the last year, to kind of where she's really just been through quite a lot of really tough stuff, but but come out of the other side feeling a lot more confidence in herself. And it's just such a lovely story and so many inspiring things that I'm sure she is going to share. There's no pressure there, Julie, by the way. Um, I know that it will come out. <laughs> 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 it's be great. Um, I'm just going to say before we get started that if you have questions that come up as we go along, if you're watching live or if you're watching on recording, then please do drop them in the comments. We would love to hear them. So with that I kind of intro done um welcome julie thanks for joining us how are you doing thank you thank you for having me back <laughs> yeah and i should have said that you joined us a year ago talking about self-worth and yeah. even then you've gone through a journey but now this is kind of it's it's the, the update really isn't it so it yeah is. so so the first thing i was going to ask you and i know we covered this before but i'm going to get you just to introduce yourself tell, tell us a little bit about you what's your connection with tech so um I'm Julie, and I my my connection into tech is with cyber security. Um, I I came here through through an unusual route of being an auditor, and then and then finding that actually cyber security is very similar. So, um, I've been in it for about 11, 12, probably twelve years now, um, and we we were chatting earlier, and I said, well, actually my connection with the tech world, I've been working in tech for the last 11, 12 years. I actually feel my most recent role is the one where I, I'm coming the closest I have to actually being, doing a tech role. So do you want to just tell us a little bit more about that role, just because that's that's the new thing, that's the exciting thing. <laughs> so, so within my role, I am uh, putting in place strategies and controls to manage cyber risk. So where we're needing to meet regulatory controls or where we're trying to just implement best practice of cyber hygiene, um, there's an ISO standard as there is for everything that you would you would adhere to, for example. Um, but my my role in that I've just stepped into is around the software engineering space, which is a new and exciting challenge for me. So I'm moving off into DevSecOps and, and understanding that whole world. Whereas previously, I've been working around enterprise and um, business business products and portfolios. Um, so yeah, wow. yeah, it's going to yeah. be interesting. Yeah, and and from what you've said, you're loving it as well. So that's really cool. So yeah, yeah. and I'm sure the more of that stuff will come up as we go along. But first yeah. of all, um wanted to ask so because we mentioned you were on here a year ago um what's changed over the last year for you and just I know there's been lots because we've talked lots of, over that year but highlights of what's changed <laughs> yeah so so I think when I came on a year ago I was uh managing quite a large team uh delivering operational security to customers and uh through through reorgs and changes last April, May, my team changed and um, I started managing security, but from a go to market perspective. So it's starting to look at the marketing, the sales side of stuff and that operational team that I had moved across to a different part of the organization. It was a choice I made. I, mm -hmm. I absolutely wanted to stay and explore it because it was new and interesting and I and I wasn't sure what it was like. Um, and Actually, after uh, a few months, I think it's fair to say I became a bit overwhelmed. Um, and maybe through COVID, may, maybe through a, a, a lack of confidence of stepping into that new world that I didn't understand, uh, went through a tough few months, spent quite a lot of time with you, trying to understand myself and and almost where I was going wrong. Um, around September time, I finally realized that actually the the thing that was wrong was that I didn't have the passion for the role that I was in. 
and my passion was around cyber security. And I think stepping away from it, trying something new, it's scary, right? Because you've never done it before. And it could have worked and it could have been like, oh my goodness, this is even better. But I but I realized that for me, it wasn't the mm. right thing. So I actively took a step and reached out into the organization um, and made a move back into cybersecurity. So rather than working with customers now, I've moved across to work in internally within within the security of the organization that I'm working in. So it's it's been huge, a huge year. I'm now five five weeks searching, in. Wasn't there the kind of what is it that I really want to do? Am I is there a great opportunity here or actually where do I go? Yeah. And it's 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 really worth emphasizing that and drawing that out that it wasn't kind of like you just went, oh yay, one day I'm gonna go over here. It was like this there's so many different options. What what do I do? How do I look after the people that are around me, live up to expectations, all sorts of pressures from all over the place. So it's but yeah, it's, it's, it's I, I think one one of the triggers was I was asked to complete a development plan and identify where where I wanted to go to. And I was suddenly sitting in an org where going upwards wasn't into a role that I don't I think I'd always envisaged. Um and and it just threw me off entirely and that that was the soul searching mm. and trying to understand you know what what do I want why why am I in this role what on earth am I doing do, am I even enjoying it and uh, as you say it's it, it really has been a journey and and that's a really interesting point because we're kind of brought in and, and as we go up through our career it's always that idea that we might go up the next step we go to the next level we know to the next level and there's a point where you can look and go actually I don't want to go to that next level I mean we don't some of us do want to go all the way to the top but yeah. when that's taken away and it's not any more about going up to the next level it's like oh so what what's success mm -hmm. now yeah. and that is then digging within and going okay what what's important to me what do I want here and yeah and I, I think that's a really valid point as well actually I took a sideways move to move across into cyber security um and, and part of that development plan was, oh, actually, I don't think I want to go upwards in this organization. And 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 yet when I looked across into cybersecurity, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, don't, I absolutely want to move up in, the, in that space. That is the right place for me. Yeah. So so again, it's about listening to yourself, I guess. Yeah. And um, you might have covered this a little bit already, but so what, what's been the most challenging thing over the period? <laughs> I I genuinely think I... I hit a point where I, I was still delivering in my job and, and doing a really good job, but I lost, I lost my confidence entirely, entirely. And, um, and I know we'll probably talk about this in, in a bit more detail later on, but I, I, I've moved quite quickly and I've been really lucky with a later career. And then suddenly I lost all confidence and didn't believe I was capable of anything anymore. And it wasn't just in that one thing. It was everything that came crashing down for me. So that's what I found most challenging. It wasn't it wasn't just the job. I just felt so overwhelmed and and lacking and, and really had to step away and start looking at myself. That that was tough. Yeah. And I think that's what you're describing there is quite common as well, is that one thing you just you just it's the way you're feeling about stuff so when you feel low in confidence you can look at anything and feel low about that as well so it's it's the state that you're in and then you start unpicking everything else in your life and it's like oh well what about this and if these threads unravel that oh, it's just such a hard place to be isn't it and yeah it really was yeah, yeah. and and so what what have you learned about yourself um, I would say I've, I've learned that I need to trust in my instincts, that, that actually success isn't all about promotion. Mm -hmm. And I, I think because I've started it later, that that was where I was really focused. Yes, of course, I want to step up. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. And then and then suddenly I was in a position where I, that that didn't look attractive to me anymore. And it made me stop and and really look at what motivates me because it, it is we spend so long working yeah it is about what makes you happy um so 
I think almost as soon as I'd made that decision, everything started to fit and feel right. And and that decision, just what what? Because if we've kind of I've skipped a bit here, so you, you're in that place where you're feeling really really low, like everything's unraveling. And then what what happened to help you come out of that? So, I I think I'd already made a decision that I wanted to go and have a chat with somebody in cybersecurity. And then I had a conversation with my current boss and, and I can't even pinpoint it to, to a specific thing, but that conversation with him just made me stop and go, no, actually be brave, be, be bold and share with him how you're feeling. He'd, he'd known some of my personal anxiety that I've been suffering through those months, but sharing with him that actually I wasn't sure whether I wanted to stay working for him mm. because it wasn't the right job for me was the hardest thing to do um and and I think spending time with you and and thinking about actually what why am I doing this what who am I doing this for is it for me or is or is it actually just that I want to please the person up above and and following that career path thing so um yeah, I I think it was that conversation with him, and then, and then almost once I'd been brave enough to say that, everything became easier because he was so mm. supportive, so supportive and encouraging, and told me how proud he was that I'd made a decision on actually this is what is right for me, irrespective of career or or whatever. This is what you want to do. So um, yeah, it just. It enabled me to go and have that conversation in cyber with confidence. Mm. And and I remember that some of that discussion and exploration around that, that kind of, could you go and speak to him? But he put so much trust in you and, and given you so much. And it was like, I don't want to let him down. Mm. And, and, and it, I don't even want to go there. And, and, and that kind of, and then I remember you having the conversation and kind of going, Oh, that wasn't the reaction I expected. <laughs> no. Oh, wow. Okay, so maybe I can do this. And it's interesting that how much we put the world that we build around how someone, we think someone's going to react and why they've done something for us and what might happen. And then just to see that coming, come crashing down in an instant, be something much better than what we expected. Yeah, I, I remember getting goosebumps when you shared it with me. It was just this kind of, oh, yep. oh, yes, yes. At last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, d I think knowing and and it does tie back to a year ago that self-worth and mm. knowing knowing that actually you are good at what you do because I'd lost my confidence I genuinely just put it down to me being me the mm. menopause covid um not able to learn new stuff anymore and and you know all that negative thinking and when and when you actually start unpicking it the more you think negatively the, the more it implodes on you and you you find that space. So as soon as soon as I was able to go, oh, actually, it's not me. I'm just not in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was uh it was such a relief yeah. for me, you and my husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it is that the the it's not me. So we take it so personally. We think it's something about who we are. Yeah. But it's it's the situation that you found yourself in. It's the way things have come together, which may emphasize something about you, but it doesn't, that's not who you are, is it? And it's it's that realization that you're more than all of that stuff. And and there's so yeah, when when things align, it's amazing. When things don't, it just doesn't. But it's not it's, it's the taking it personally that's that holds us back. And um yeah. Very much. I'm just going to remind, so I've had a quick comment in here. Uh, oh, I've lost it now. Um, just, yeah, scary how the loss of confidence can impact so many areas of your life and you start to doubt yourself and everything. Yeah. And, 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 and there's something that I would just want to draw out of that, which is one of the big messages we've talked about and I talk about with a lot of people is that it's also that when you lose your confidence, you don't have to find it again. It's there waiting for you. 
but it's not when we find, feel that lack of confidence, we feel like we've got to scrabble around and get everyone else to tell us how wonderful we are or something that's needed to boost our confidence. But as you're talking about, it's it was just that realization that you're OK and you can do it. It's it, then that was there all the time. You just yeah. weren't looking in the right place. And and I think I was constantly because I was so, so, so far out of my comfort zone, any small thing that I like anybody would make a mistake when they're when they're going off into a new environment I just took it so personally I think being a bit of a perfectionist I wanted to know it already yeah and and then when I didn't I I was lost I was lost in a language that I didn't understand you know in cyber you speak a certain way in sales you speak a certain way and I I didn't understand where they were driving with things or what they were doing. So it kind of built up on itself to the point where I found it really difficult to speak and be myself mm-hmm. in in meetings because I'd doubt myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and and again, moving across back into something that does sit well with me, I don't even have to think anymore. I just I just speak. So, yeah, it's and and there's something in that that you were saying as well earlier about and you weren't passionate about that learning the language. And I think if you if you had been passionate about it, you probably would have been able to kind of go, right, I'm going to throw myself in. But when you're kind of thinking, don't know if this is me anyway, then it means you can hold yourself back even more. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Whereas now, now you're aligned and it's like, yeah, I want to, I don't care that I don't know. I want to learn. I want to. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's a really interesting concept because I know for some people, they say, as you move upwards, you should be able to broaden across the, the types of roles that you do. But actually, that's another realization for me. No, actually, I'm really happy just to stay in my little channel. And, and that's a cool channel to be in, to be fair. And, and I'll go as far as I can in that channel, but I don't ever need to be a CEO. I don't yeah. ever, you know, I'm not, I'm not aiming to that kind of place, but I'd like to hit the, the top of where I'm at, definitely. Yeah. And the only other thing I want to mention about confidence is um, women, and I mean, it's been proven that women lacking confidence and we are less self-assured than men. Um, we... I think exploring things like that, speaking with other people in your program, realizing that you're not alone Mm -hmm. and that actually there are other females that feel this way. Yeah. It's really empowering because it does make you go, okay, actually we we are all like that. I might give myself a bit of a break. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to be. And, and, and it's when, and this is why I love that you're sharing your story because it's when, People who come along who think um, you think they're really successful and they must be full of confidence. And then you hear them share their own doubt and you're like, oh, so they can still get to where they are without with with that as well. So there's chance. And I, that's happened to me where I've, I've heard people's stories and gone. There's a there's a possibility for me still here. <laughs> Which and it's just that it's okay not to be confident and and just to know that that doesn't hold you back necessarily as much as you think. No, I mean genuinely thought I was rubbish and and actually I wasn't at all and I can look back now and say that but um, mm. as you know at the time that was not the case. <laughs> Did not feel like that. So so how how has this affected your visibility and 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 your willingness to put yourself out there? I think that's the the, the other thing that you've shared a bit, a bit about so we we talked about me coming here a year ago and um and happy to talk but wanted to do it off camera so that we could edit and control it and here I am happy to freewheel um and just go with the flow which is one of yeah. the things that you taught me <laughs> very well um but I do I do think having confidence changes the, the position you're happy to put yourself in. For me, I'm really passionate about being an authentic leader. I've spent a lot of time the last couple of years understanding myself and what I want to be. And I I want everybody to know you don't you don't have to tick all the boxes. You don't have to have a degree or be this or be that. You just you just have to want to do what you're doing and have the the ability to do it. So 
I get a drive out of going out and sharing my story because it helps other people mm-hmm. basically and but but again that's what makes me happy yes so even though I'm sharing it for other people and I really hope that it helps them actually it makes me happy to think if I help one person go oh my goodness yeah I was yeah. in that place or I've I've had that experience um or, or they're sitting in a job right now and thinking oh, I can't walk away because look look at what they're giving me look at all these opportunities but actually it's not it's not in in here then you, you actually can walk away and it just lifts you up I'm I uh know that you know that I'm far more visible already in five weeks of moving across into into a role that's working for me and I am confident to speak and put myself out there and share my views it just changes things and so and we talked a little bit earlier you talked about a a sort of a before and after Mm. so how 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 do you show up differently now to a year ago so I I'll give you an example there was a meeting that I was in and I I hadn't fully prepared because I was doing 10 other things but it was really the the piece that was in entirely out of my comfort zone and I turned up and um and with every word that I said I knew that I wasn't prepared and I was against a tough audience and it literally drove me to ground I I lost, that was the point I would say, I lost Mm -hmm. everything. Um, And unfortunately it was backed up by another female emailing my boss and telling my boss, that's not what I would expect of somebody in that role. Um, And I, I think we both know that was the point where I just doubted in everything and it took everything away from me um all of that great work that I'd I'd built all my confidence my self-worth I knew I was good in what I'd done stepped myself out of my comfort zone and then got pushed back down by another female and um and now I'm actually going out so the difference now um I speak to other females and I tell them the great things that they're doing And I always look for the positive in what they're doing and see that I don't look for the flaws because actually we need to work together. And, and there's, there's less of us in senior roles, certainly in cyber, we have to see the good things and shout them out and call out to people and say, so, so I think that's the thing that I do already. I've had a couple of situations where I've been like, that's brilliant. That is so cool that you know you've done a thing or be, believe in yourself or just thanking somebody for for stepping out and doing something for you it's it's learning that actually I don't ever want to make anybody feel like yeah. I f- did in in that moment and and I remember when you shared that experience and you were kind of saying I just can't present anymore and I'm thinking hang on I've seen you present you can present but it's that level when you bring that self-doubt in and you're questioning yourself and you're kind of you're and and you were I remember you saying well it it means I need to prepare more I need to practice more I mean and so all this extra burden was put on you when actually it wasn't that it was just that it was a tough situation And it was a really tough group of people. And then someone else laid on that extra. And exactly what you're saying, when someone else then goes, oh, you're not confident (laughs) and you need to pull your socks up or whatever it is, it just doesn't help, does it? The finding, if you want to help someone to to grow, you find a different way of doing it, don't you? Yeah. I, I remember after that experience and I had a deck I was trying to do and I literally spent about well, I spent a whole weekend, but I spent time either side of it as well, going into so much detail, so much overthinking, so much worrying, was it the right thing? Um, And I would have been better off just sitting and talking to that person and having a more natural conversation like I'm having with you now. But it just, yeah, it's amazing what it can do to you. Yeah. I'm just going to remind people that if you want to drop a question in for Julie, then please do feel free to drop it in the comments. Um, We will take some questions as we go along and at the end of this as well. So, um, yeah. uh, And I'm going to ask. So we've talked a bit about this anyway, but how how have our coaching discussions helped you over this last year? Um, Immeasurably and yet. (laughs) 
<laughs> for everybody out there emma's absolutely amazing um and she will always say so so why why do you need to do that so i'll i'll be building in my head all these things that i must do and i have to do and like well you know my boss is relying on me so i have to do it but who's that for julian does that make you happy and um i can genuinely say that you have centered me and brought me back to reality in terms of thinking about me as a person rather than the situation that I'm caught up in and helping me to see things in a different way and explore it. But you don't give me the answer. You help me to find that answer for myself, which is the right way to do it. Um, I don't think I would have made it through the last year without you because I've, as you know, I've had some really fraught times where, and you've just been like, yep, yeah, okay, here's, here's a session time, let's do it. Um, yeah, the, the annoying yet yeah, wonderful way in which you make me look at myself and think about myself <laughs> has changed how I am yeah, and, and how I act because yeah. I used to be afraid of saying no to going to meetings and stuff. And now, now I make those decisions and I don't even think about it. And it's thanks to you driving into me, actually, this, this is your life and, and you're okay to lead it your way. You don't always have to please everybody. And, and again, I think it's something for females in particular, that need. And you gave me the tools mm -hmm. to unpick it. Sometimes you needed to help me through. <laughs> Just be that little guide. I've got a dog coming in behind me. <laughs> so being, it, it's that, I, I kind of see myself as I'm joining you on the journey. And you know, I love kind of being outdoors, but it's that kind of walking alongside with you, taking yeah. you on that journey and just kind of saying, notice what's around you and <laughs> we've actually done that haven't we <laughs> oh I, rem I remember that as well when I was in the depths of despair and you were like oh look at those beautiful trees or isn't this a lovely countryside and I'm like yeah but my life is over and I'm I'm just I can't do this anymore I'm gonna have to I think I that was at a point where I was like I'm done I'm not gonna work anymore <laughs> yeah. yeah um you're right and you made me stop and go actually you're here with lovely people having a lovely time let that go let it's i think that's the biggest thing as well to to let things sit and just give you give your mind time to process it whereas i would try and i need to fix this because i don't know where i'm at yeah being able to step away was something you definitely did but it's that when we get into that scary place we want to get out of it as soon as possible so we kind of flail around trying to figure our way out and it's that sort of stepping in sinking sand thing it's you get further and further and further in but if you can know that you're going to find a way out if you just stop then but it, that's only something you can do by doing it and that's the other thing that someone else seeing it someone else saying hang on have you noticed you're just kind of getting yourself deeper here that can help you settle and that's kind yeah. of the thing that that yeah I, I know I I helped you with a few times it's like just stop the thinking I know <laughs> stop digging <laughs> I know it's so bad you can turn it you can turn it into your worst nightmare if you want to and and I mean I think the only other thing I would say is be, being in the program you suddenly have a group of women who are just like you hmm. and and knowing that you are not on your own, that actually this is quite common, that we feel these anxieties, that we lack the confidence and talking about your scenarios and situations with others and realising, well, I've been, I can help you with that. I've been through that, so I know I can help you. And getting that help back when you need it is, is huge. I think everybody needs a little cohort that they can go to in, in a similar space from a, from a work perspective that they can go and share. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's been some amazing discussions in that. In So this is in the mentorship program. So I didn't even say at the beginning. So Julie's a part of my mentorship program and has had some coaching sessions with me as well. But the, in the mentorship program, we do have this cohort of other women who are similar, more junior, some more senior. It's all, it's several different levels, but all sharing their experiences and the things they've been through and just knowing that that's 
there for you. I mean, it's the thing I wish I had have. That's what I'm setting up. It's just knowing what I didn't have women I could reach out to. And I didn't understand the value of that until it started happening. And then it was like, oh, oh, this is different. This feels different. And and as soon as you start to see other people have that same feeling around things, they're just struggling in similar ways and you're not feeling quite so different anymore. It just means you you get that extra level of confidence in yourself, don't you? You definitely do. And I don't, it doesn't, I don't think it ever matters where you're at in, in a career or whether you're not even having a career. Mm. If, the, if that's the way that you're feeling, when you have people who can reassure you, actually, you're okay, you're good. And um, why not try thinking about it in this way rather than that way? It, it is just that sanity check and pushing you back into the real world of letting it go and, and just seeing what happens. So so I've just, we're just going back a little bit, uh, just a comment from someone here saying, I often wonder if the people who bring you down, um, as we were talking about kind of the, the, the person who kind of, yeah. gave you that comment whether they're just a bit scared of your potential and and that's such a great point that yeah what's yes. going on for them yes I don't know and whether they saw me as as a, a a threat I I wouldn't I wouldn't say I would say that person was very comes across as very confident etc but what you don't know is what's going on in their mind or their lives and and what they're experiencing and actually they could have just been having a really rubbish week yeah. and I was just the, the the last straw and they and they took their frustration out by sending that email not thinking about the impact yeah. that it would have on me but let, making themselves feel better in that space that's yeah. that's kind of how I see it I don't and I'd love to think they were threatened by my potential but I highly doubt it <laughs> And, and at the end of the day, know. it doesn't matter too much what was going on for them, but buying a, being able to give them the benefit of the doubt. And like you yeah. say, it might just be that they had a bad day and they just wanted to rant at someone and you were the person yeah. that they ended up ranting about. And yeah. who knows? And, and it doesn't even mean, even if they've been threatened by you then, it doesn't mean they're always threatened by you. So there's there's an interesting bit that we tend to build up stories about everyone yeah. else, don't we? Because and we don't know. What don't know. Yeah. 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 And and actually, with the, with this individual, I, I had more more than one connection with them, and and experienced similar things again. And and I actually came away from it trying to tell myself, well, it's it's actually probably their insecurity that's playing out back mm -hmm. back onto me. But that but once you've lost your mojo, you've lost your mojo, and it's really then then you're like trying yeah. to fix yourself and and get yourself back to where you were is is really difficult really yeah. difficult but so so and you've kind of touched on this but when we think what's because you've been a manager you working with people what has what you've learned about your confidence helped you um in and given you insight into leading when you're leading and developing others so i i think i've realized and i always i know that i'm an effective communicator I know that I like to bring people together and collaborate. And when you add on to that, that, that wish to empower other females and take people feel good, then you kind of extend it outwards. And actually, so, so my original mission when, when I first started on your mentorship program was around bringing women into cyber. And now I, I recognize anyone's skills for what they do, whether it's neurodiversity or race or ethnicity. It's, it, I've kind of expanded it out in terms of how I like to look at stuff. So I, I make sure that I present myself out to people to give them psychological safety, that they can mm -hmm. be them with me. And it's okay to, mm -hmm. to be like that. Um, and, and I think supporting other people when you're a leader is probably more important that that is leading because when you enable your team to go and be amazing and successful you're doing exactly what you should be doing if they're happy and they're enjoying it and they know that they they know they can fail and it's and that's okay too because we all how else do we learn everybody yeah. is human everybody makes mistakes so yeah 
And I love the way you're saying that from the heart that that it's not the yeah everyone should fail because they need the, it, it's the you've seen that yeah. for yourself now and and actually yeah you've seen how you've grown by being willing to allow yourself to fail massively my my old line manager said to me just a couple of days ago the the journey that I've been on over the last year he, he's aware of all of it and actually he's really proud of me because I've made that decision and you just think yeah I have actually and I've done it for me and I think that's probably the first time that 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 process I had to go through to to finally realize it's all right just to do what I want to do and I'm going to be successful because I'm doing what I want to do I think that's the really key thing yeah when, when you trust in yourself actually things just flourish and open up for you yeah and and by doing that you are now inspiring other people so you're having and, and you're having more impact by yep. trusting and, and giving yourself what you need and and it's really when you're in the low place it feels really selfish and it feels like it's wrong because you're putting yourself first but actually when you do it and you realize oh hang on now I've got more energy oh yeah. wow what's that all about that's that, why did nobody tell me this and they they probably have but you just haven't seen it <laughs> And you have to be in the right space for it as well, I think. And like having having the discussions, you could say, like sometimes you just say one sentence to me and I'd be like, oh, oh. And, and then my brain would start to look at things in a different way mm -hmm. that I hadn't th thought about. I know um, a, a perfect scenario I was saying, oh, you know, well, and I need to learn what what my boss's new world is because I want to be helping him and and supporting him and stuff. And and you and and yet he's not inviting me to these meetings and like all this pressure I was putting on myself. And you said, have you have you considered that actually he might not be in the right uh, headspace or have the time to be able to support you right now? It's not about you at all. He's it's not that he's stopping you from from doing that. But because I had no confidence, mm. I immediately jumped to it must be me. He must not want me to do that anymore because now I've proved that I'm not very good at this job scenario. And actually, it probably was just he was so busy doing other stuff, he would forget to invite me or it, he'd never even given it a moment's thought. But to me, it was my whole overthinking in my head. <laughs> Overanalyzing, trying to figure oh. out what... The the meaning behind it all was when actually he was just overwhelmed himself yeah and probably exactly. overanalyzing his boss or something like that yeah yeah you just don't know <laughs> so um i'm just going to say if any again if anyone wants to drop any questions in we've got a couple more just i wanted to ask you and the, the this follows on which is the what advice would you give to anyone who wants to develop their confidence so i i think Look at how you tell your story and think about the language that you use. Because I used to downplay my life. And I, I even said I, I started a career 11, 11, 12 years ago. But actually, I've achieved so much. And when you recognize yourself as a whole person, mm -hmm. so I was, I'm a mum, I'm a wife, and actually, are those things that I wanted to be? Yes. If they're not what you want to be, cool. I'm not a wife. I'm not, you know, I haven't got children. Amazing. But if you can look at yourself, change the language you use about your achievements and almost sit and list mm -hmm. what you've achieved in your life, not just your career. Yeah. not just have you got have you got friends have you got hobbies that you enjoy we're, we're one whole person and having confidence is showing actually am I doing everything that I want to in my life and if there is something there's one thing in that whole round it's only one thing in that whole round it's I made my career everything and actually it wasn't because the rest of my life was pretty good yeah so that's my advice go and look at yourself as a whole as well as that's whole, so true yeah, yeah. And, and and that's one of the yeah core exercises in the the figuring out your mission bit in the mentorship program is just having a look across your career much more broadly what are all the things you bring into you 
And then actually, what does that tell you about what you enjoy, what you love to do? It's such a grounding position. Yes. It's like you're creating a foundation and then you can go, oh, now I want to go over here. But if even if that crumbles, you've still got a foundation to come back to, to go, well, no, maybe I'll try that one instead. And yeah, yeah I think that's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got, the, there was one question submitted, which I'm going to ask you, which came from Becca, um, which is, um, so do you find your confidence increases when you purposefully choose to have fun with the situation and with yourself? Thanks for that, Becca. Becca's um, <laughs> also a member of the mentorship program. Yeah, so, so I know. That's a great already. question. <laughs> yeah, do I have fun uh, when, I'm, uh, when I'm confident? I get pleasure from... Mm pushing myself forward a bit more each time and um, I think I have fun when I'm doing the thing that I want to do which sounds really silly because everybody would say that but um not necessarily yeah and I think I get, yeah fun. do you find yourself being more playful when you're enjoying yourself I think I'm always playful, to be fair. I find it very difficult to go into a meeting and just have a serious conversation. I've got to have, uh, hey, how are you? And and humanise people. So I guess in that respect, yes, I do have fun. I do it in everything that I do. And when you're lacking confidence, you probably don't do that mm -hmm. because you're too busy with your head down thinking nobody's going to... I mean, literally, sometimes I wouldn't talk in meetings because I'd be too afraid to. So... Am I having fun now? Yes, I, I genuinely am. I'm I'm over the moon with with what I'm doing now. So yes, I do. I guess I've taught myself <laughs> around rather than it being pleasure. Looking back, yeah. And and final question. So if anyone wants to know more, speak to you, follow up with this. Where's the best place for them to get in touch with you? Um, I'm I'm in your group on Facebook mm -hmm. um, and I'm on LinkedIn as yeah. well. So, and we'll get link to that. so you're happy for people yeah. to get in touch on LinkedIn. And, uh, yeah. Do you know, I, I think if you watched my story a year ago and then now last year, last year was all about me as a person and my, my background, listen to the story that I told about not having a career. No, no. If I did that again now, completely different. And, yeah. and it's that working with you, exploring myself has has changed who I am so I would love to support anybody that wanted to reach out and it, I think it's really important as well not to minimize where you were last year because you've gone through some growth already yeah and it's that ever-changing journey so in a year's time who knows where we're going to be yeah I know, <laughs> I know. both of us and you update on Julie <laughs> What's she doing now? Well, I'm in the Atlantic and I'm rowing a boat. <laughs> some plans there. <laughs> there they go. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Julie. It has been fantastic having you in here. I don't think we've got any more questions coming through, but yeah, it's it's been brilliant to, to catch up with you and to share your story. And I'm sure so many people will get so much inspiration from this because it's it's just lovely to hear that journey that you've been on and to get that insight into what it's like really so thank you very much you're welcome <laughs>